Hi, I'm Luke with PRM Filtration, and today I want to go over a dry run review of our dual bag filter skid housings and kind of show you how to change out a filter, you know, one at a time. This particular unit has two high pressure stainless steel housings, so the combined flow of this particular unit is 200 GPM. So, a couple of features you have your valves on the, on the influent, which is a top. You come around to the effluent. Again, it's another manifold together. You have our effluent gauge and two valves to control the flow through each vessel. And the good thing with the dual filter skid is that it allows you to continue operations even if you need to change out a bag filter. So you no longer have to shut down your plant or your operation. You can just simply isolate whichever one you need to change, change out the bag filter while you're still flowing through the other, and then turn it back on. And one of the great features with this skid is these bag filters are mounted in parallel which means you have flow going through both of them at the same time. What that will allow you to do is when you have to change out a bag filter, you can keep your operations running and change out a filter and not have to shut down your plant. So when you're looking at the, the unit, your effluent gauge, I would consider that more of a constant depending on what your application is. There's the, the back pressure through these will not affect that gauge. So that's what, you, that's what you use to determine the differential. So you look at your effluent gauge. Now we have our influent gauge on the top. And as this pressure increases compared to the effluent, that's when you kind of get the idea that you're going to need to change a bag filter or two to allow that decrease of pressure and get the flow going through. So we'll walk through a mock, a mock run of changing out one bag filter at a time, which we'll do this one. So what we'll do first is we're going to pop off our pin. Close off the influent. I'll put the pin back in the locket. I'm going to come around. We're going to close off our effluent. Again, putting our pin in the locket. Now, this particular vessel is isolated, but we're still pumping through the, the secondary vessel. So the next step, if you look down at the bottom, you have a one-inch drain valve. You probably want to put a piece of hose to capture the water coming out, but you kind of want to get this drain down as much as you can to make it easier to pull out that bag filter. So, we have our hose on here, we have it contained. We're going to open up that drain valve. And to allow some air to come in, we're going to crack open our sample port. Well, as soon as you crack open that sample port, as long as your bag filter is not extremely clogged, you're going to see the water gushing out. And once we're pretty, pretty certain that most of the water is out, we can start then to loosen up the actual top plate. And it's important to drain it and make sure you are off before you start taking the plate off to make sure the pressure is not still pushing on the top lid. Okay, now we take our lid off and we'll put that off to the side, keep it out of the way. On the inside, we're going to loosen up our compression clamp, which I'll show you in a minute. It's a T-clamp with a distributor plate that goes across on the top of the bag filter. It just sits in here and there's two tabs on either side of the, the housing to allow you to kind of lock it in position when you're tightening and allow you to take it out when you're loosening it out. So we'll put these off to the side. The main reason you want to drain out your bag filter, because you can imagine, if this is full water and this, this is solid, you're now lifting not only the weight of the bag filter, but also the weight of the water and training it too, which makes it very inconvenient. So we take out our filter and put that to the side. It's always a good idea when you change out your filter, and you, on site, you can do it just by looking down on it. But any questions, you can pull it out. So it's always a good idea to inspect the actual stainless steel strainer on the inside. And they can be pressure washer clean as needed. And that just makes sure these perforations allow the water to flow through. Once you have your screening clean, 
the change out where you slide it back on. Now we're going to put in a new bag filter. It's really important when you change out a bag filter to put a new one on that you make sure your filter actually goes across the whole column of that screen and not just clumped up at the top. What I always like to do is I have a designated clean pull that I just put in and all I'm doing is just lightly pressing down the bag filter itself to make sure it goes across the entire, entire housing. That's good to go. We want to put our distributor plate back in first. Make sure we get a good seal into the hole allotted and we're going to lock it into the, the two tabs discussed. Now we're going to tighten it up. It doesn't have to be extremely tight. Hand tight's fine. The objective is to be able to ensure that that plate is tight on the bag filter and it kind of decreases the, the chances of it short circuiting and going around the filter and it keeps that filter in place. The O-ring on the top, it's not a bad idea to use some kind of a food grade grease. Just the rub on the top and all that does is just try to maintain the longevity of that O-ring so it won't dry out. But with anything you add to, to treatment, make sure it's compatible with your constituents. Now we're ready to put the lid back on. Kind of eyeball to line up the bolts. And at first we're just going to hand tighten. And we're going to do a cross pattern to make sure the pressure is evenly distributed across that plate. Okay. While I'm tightening these, you know, some of these applications are in not so perfect environments that water will inevitably get on the bolts, you know, when you're changing it out. It wouldn't be a bad idea to just put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolts before you put it back on. That just helps to make sure next time you come around that there won't be any corrosion. It'll be easier to, to get it off for you. And once we get them hand tight, you can use a wrench or screwdriver, something to get you a little bit more leverage to make sure you have it tight. And again, you want to tighten it, but you don't need to over tighten. Again, I'm doing a cross pattern to make sure the pressure is evenly distributed. And once you turn water on, that'll be your cue as to whether you have a good seal and it's tight because you'll start seeing the water seep down around the, the top lid. And all you have to do in that instance is either simply just tighten the bolts down a little bit more or take it off and reseat it to make sure you have a good seal around the O-ring. So now we're ready. We have our new bag filter in. The next step, we want to make sure you close that drain. Drain's closed. Our sample port's closed. I'm going to take out the pin. I'm going to open up our effluent valve using the lock pin to lock it back on. There we go. And come around to the influent. And I'm going to open it back up. Putting our pin in to lock it in. Okay, so now we have water coming through the vessel. Anytime you introduce water to a vacant space, you want to introduce a little bit of air to make sure it degasses. So what you do is just open up that sample port slightly. You're going to hear some hissing because it's the air flowing out as the water's filling in. I wouldn't recommend opening up the whole way because once the water reaches the top, it's going to come out. So I always keep about an eighth or a quarter open. And I keep my, my gloves and I have a nitrile glove in if I was on a job site. I keep it above, just making a dome. If you wait a little bit, you'll start hearing it get faster and faster. As soon as that water starts bubbling out, I can close it off real quick. Now it's degas, the water's going through. And if you look back at your influent pressure gauge, 
you should notice that the pressure has decreased as you just change out a clogged filter with a new filter. And that's how you change out a bag filter in a dual bag filter housing and a dry run of the application.